I'm going to ask you a question. Are any of you watching this video from China? Probably not many of you. And those of you who can watch Visual Politics from China will be doing so because you are using a VPN. And why do I know that nobody watches Visual Politics from China? It's very simple, because YouTube is censored in China, but you already know that. What you probably don't know is the fact that YouTube, Google, and Facebook can't be seen from China. And that is a technological marvel. Censoring the internet is not as simple as passing a couple of laws. To give you an idea, it's estimated that in 2020 alone, China spent over $6.6 .6 billion on internet censorship. That's half of what it costs to stage the 2018 World Cup in Russia. In addition, there are more than 2 million people working on keeping the Chinese internet clean from freedom. In other words, the Great Cyber Wall of China is something like the Burj Khalifa of oppression, a marvel of technology, even if it is used for evil. And as we know, if there is one thing China knows how to do well, it is to export its technological marvels. So the question is, what if China also wanted to export its censorship to the West? Well, in this video, we're going to tell you all about that. I was born in the year 1989. Don't do the math. At that time, almost no country had China as a major trading partner. The United States dominated virtually every market. 34 years later, that picture is totally different. That translates into money, but also a lot of political clout. Check this out. H&M, Nike, Adidas, among others, in China's crosshairs for their criticism of the situation of Uyghurs. That's right. Everyone wants to enter the huge Chinese market, but that market has very strict rules. Rules that go beyond industry regulations. And if clothing brands have to worry, imagine other industries like this one. Chinese censors force Disney to cut kissing scene in Mulan. I'm not making this up. Basically, if Disney wants its movies to be seen in China, it has to pass censorship rules. Rules that, in many cases, go way beyond cutting out a kiss. In this case, we're talking about the 2020 remake of Mulan. In order for the film to be seen in China, Disney had to adapt to Chinese tastes, which included, of course, adapting to the taste of the Chinese Communist Party. The problem with all this is that we are talking about a film made for the international market. Put another way, without realizing it, all of us viewers have had to suffer indirectly from Chinese censorship. So the question we are asking today is, how far does Chinese censorship go? And should we be worried? Today, we are going to answer all these questions. But first, let's take a look at some history. The Great Cyber Wall of China. China has shown that you can open up to the world and keep your dictatorship. You only have to control one thing, the flow of information. And if not, just look at Cuba. Fortunately, this is increasingly difficult to achieve. Before the internet, there were few media outlets, so it was easy to control them. Now, thousands of blogs, websites, and articles on social media are created every second. That explains why censoring the internet is an impossible task, even for the worst dictatorships. For example, Belarus is as oppressive as a dictatorship as China can be. However, some of you probably live near this country. Even Belarusians themselves share hilarious memes of their dictator on the internet. This doesn't mean that Alexander Lukashenko is a reasonable dictator. It means he doesn't have the money or the technology to control how his nearly 9.5 million citizens use the internet. However, China is another world. And to start talking about censorship in China, you have to understand how everything behind it works. We know that China doesn't release much information about the way they censor, but testimonies, international agencies, and investigations have helped to reveal the way this country censors. In 1994, China laid its first internet cables. At that time, there were hardly any websites in the world, so there wasn't much to censor. But as the first digital media and blogs emerged, Beijing realized it had to get to work. And that's how the so-called Great Firewall of China, or as we call it here, the Great Cyberwall of China, was born. This project began operating in 2003 with an investment equivalent to $800 million. This firewall has been intensified with the arrival of Xi Jinping to the government of China in 2013. But let's go back to the firewall. Its mission was to block content, and this was done through lists of blocked IPs and censored keywords. Let me give you an example. Imagine that a news portal in Holland posts a news item that criticizes the Chinese Communist Party. Well, the Chinese cyberwall would detect the keywords and block the news story. That is, it would not be able to be seen from a Chinese IP address. To give you an idea, today there are companies that offer their technological services to the Chinese Communist Party. And what do they censor? Well, basically, everything that contradicts any narrative or position of the Communist Party. For example, almost any article that talks about Tibet, Taiwan, or Uyghurs is likely to be censored. And that explains this news item from 2010. 
Google pulls search engine out of China. The internet giant arrived in 2006 with the condition from China to censor its search results. At first, Google agreed. Think about it. How could they miss the opportunity of tapping into the Chinese market and its millions of users? Well, according to estimates, Google managed to have a market share close to 30% in the country. These numbers are not bad if we take into account that China already had a search engine, Baidu, which at that time had a 58% market share. However, problems did not take long to appear. Google took a risky decision that the Communist Party did not like at all. It started to warn users when some search results were removed. As you can imagine, this was publicly acknowledging censorship. And how did China react? The first response was Operation Aurora, a series of cyber attacks by Chinese hackers on Google. At the same time, China created an entire ecosystem to give priority to local companies. In 2010, Google stopped censoring content and left China. After Google, Facebook and many others followed suit. This was bad news for freedom in China, but great news for many Chinese companies. Baidu imitates Google and launches its own browser. Exactly. The departure of Google and the rest of the giants of Silicon Valley opened the door for a lot of Chinese internet companies to make a killing. It was around this time that companies like WeChat appeared. Companies like Baidu were consolidated. In other words, in Beijing, they were in luck. Not only had they managed to maintain censorship, they had also managed to create their own online industry. An industry much easier to control than any other foreign company. And I know what you're thinking now. Okay, we know there's censorship in China, but how can you export that censorship? Well, we're going to find that out right now. The big Chinese market. Until 2008, China was known for being the factory of the world, a center of cheap labor full of factories and all kinds of imitation goods, and the world thought that it would last forever. However, after the 2008 crisis, China was also revealed as a market. Here on Visual Politic, we already told you how Lego, the toy company, has managed to survive thanks in part to the Chinese market. It's an old video, but if you're a veteran follower, you'll surely have seen it. By the way, this is a great time to remind you that we release new videos on this channel every week. So subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell button down there so you don't miss any of our updates. But let's get back to our story. The truth is that China is not just a factory, it is also a market and it is becoming more and more lucrative. Take a look at this graph. Here, you can see the IMF outlook for the Chinese economy. Technically, by 2028, China could surpass the United States in GDP. This does not mean that China is going to be richer than the United States. Remember that Chinese population is several times larger than that of the United States. But the truth is that the Chinese market is attractive for any company, even more so if we take into account that they have recovered faster than any other nation after the coronavirus crisis. And we're not just talking about a marketplace for selling mobile phones. We're also talking about cultural products. Sports, movies, and all kinds of video content. So the question is, how to adapt to the Chinese market? Well, we're going to look at that now. Here we speak with censorship. Let's look at a very famous case of current censorship. We're going to talk about Disney and the movie called Mulan. And no, we're not talking about the animated version, but the new version of this movie. <laughs> And you'll say, Mulan? But what line could this Disney film possibly cross? Well, Mulan tells the story of a woman who defends China from the attacks of the evil Huns. However, the lead actress who played the role of Mulan in the Disney version had expressed her support for the protesters in Hong Kong. That means that many groups in China called for a boycott of the movie. But not only that, the Chinese government removed a kissing scene in the film as explained by the director of Mulan herself. It was a very beautiful scene, but the Chinese office said it couldn't be done. It didn't look good to Chinese audiences, so we took it out. Nikki Caro, director of Mulan. So the question is, if Disney has removed the kiss from Mulan, how many other parts of the script have had to be adapted to meet all aspects of the Chinese narrative? Think about it. Mulan is a film for international consumption. In other words, it's meant to be seen in all markets, including Europe and the United States. That means that we will all be watching a film that not only has Chinese censorship, but in many cases, could also be Communist Party propaganda. Of course, this wouldn't be a problem if we were only talking about one film in particular. But what if Disney and all the big production companies ended up doing the same thing with all their films? Now, wait a minute, because here, we're not just talking about movies. We're also talking 
about sports. For example, the NBA. As you may know, the NBA is the American Basketball League. That is to say, it's where the most important basketball teams from all over the United States can be found. Well, Houston Rockets president Daryl Morey posted a tweet where he shared a slogan supporting the Hong Kong protests. This seems harmless enough if we were in any Western country. However, in China, it triggered a diplomatic crisis costing billions, with a B, billions of dollars. Suddenly, China censored every game featuring the Houston Rockets, took down billboards and brought all possible pressure against the NBA. As you can imagine, the next time an American athlete or executive wants to express a political opinion that goes against Beijing's interests, he or she will think twice. To give you an idea, we can find signs of Chinese censorship even at the Oscars. Chloe Zhao wins an Oscar for Nomad Land, but the news was censored in China. CNN. Chloe Zhao is a Chinese actress who was awarded the Oscar for Best Director at the 2021 Oscars. However, the news was censored by news agencies and publications in social media in China. And why is that, you may ask? Well, because in 2003, this brave woman said, plain and simple, that, quote, her country of origin is full of lies, end quote. And to say that being Chinese is going to cost you. And this is just one more case. However, China remains an increasingly attractive market. So attractive that even those companies who abandoned it want to return. Check this out. Facebook opens a subsidiary in China, the forbidden country. With this move, Facebook would have joined companies like Apple and Google, which have also given in to Xi Jinping's government by making concessions in order to operate in the country. And you may be wondering, is this really a problem? Are you saying that in the future I won't be able to watch uncensored movies or post whatever I want on Facebook? Well, not exactly. But it is a growing problem and we may not be aware of it because we are increasingly seeing censorship as something acceptable. The coronavirus has made us accept a lot of restrictions that were not allowed before, such as confinements and curfews. We'll have to be careful because we could end the freedoms that we are used to. It's just food for thought. After this little dose of free reflection by Visual Politic, now it is your turn. What can you do to avoid Chinese censorship? Do you mind watching a censored film? And how can you stand up to the Asian giant. You can leave your answer in the comments below. And as always, don't forget that here at Visual Politic, we release new videos every week. So subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell button down there so you don't miss any of our updates. If you like this video, please tell us and like it. And I'll see you next time.